give you a quick heads up. Uh, spring is like so close. It's just right here. Still a little bite in the air, but it's just, just about here. Along with spring and summer coming along, I wanted to give you a heads up on something with the channel. I'm going to be releasing review videos for different products. It's kind of the marketing season. People are out and about starting to get emails from different companies wanting me to just share their product. Would you please review this and just make a quick video on it? Not even asking me specifically to endorse the product, just make a video, check it out. Here it is. You guys, I'm going to be doing these. I wanted to give you a heads up because I've had a few people in the past watch these review videos and then leave really dumb comments. Comments like, Jax is a sellout. He's a sellout. Okay, if you don't like watching review videos, don't watch it. Please, just don't even go there. Just hang tight for the weekly regular old vlog style footage, okay? But, oh man, if you go in and you watch it and then you complain about it, it's probably going to be a quick trip straight to the block list and I just, I just don't want to deal with it. So... Uh, I wanted to be real with you and be, able to be straight. So with that out in the open, you guys enjoy this video. Good morning, you all. Oh man, it is a good morning. Just get a load of that. A little snow shine, a little sunshine. And I'll tell you something interesting where I parked right here, out my window. That's the old mighty Missouri froze over right there. The Missouri River. I am in what you would consider pretty far extreme northeastern Montana. Poplar is the name. Missouri River is the game. I'm uh, hauling what will probably be my one and only load of cows in the month of March. Every single ranch in Montana is calving in March. Okay, So because of that, nobody's really focusing on moving cattle, shipping cattle. March gets dicey, but my good friend, Joel, pulled through for me here called me last week and said hey i got a load of cows they're pregnant cows that are going to calve in april uh that we need to haul from poplar to their new home down in cora wyoming it's bright and early in the morning i had to do something last night that i just can't stand i despise more than anything idling my truck if it's hot in the summertime guys idle their trucks to run their air conditioner i'm like nope i'll shut it off roll my windows down and deal with it in the winter time i don't run my truck i've put heaters that heat my engine you know diesel fired heaters that'll heat my engine heat my bunk but there still comes a time where it gets cold enough that you worry mm, am i gonna have diesel problems am i gonna gel up am i gonna have issues if i park and shut my truck off for the next you know six seven eight hours last night was one of those nights it was about five below up here. As much as I just can't stand wasting the life of my engine idling all night, because that's what it does. I mean, it wastes the life. All engines have a certain amount of life and it wastes some of that life. If I have any issues in the morning, I'm in a pretty remote area. So we idled last night, but to mitigate that, what I did, I could have slept, you know, 80, 90 miles back up the road where there was some civilization. There was, you know, a truck stop, for example. But that would have been like at 11 o'clock at night. So knowing that it was going to be cold and I was going to have to idle, I opted to drive all the way out here to the ranch and just park on the county road. I'm just on the road out here. That's where I slept last night. You can mitigate the amount of idling by driving a portion of the night. And that way I slept here and we're up and at them. And and we're all good. And don't worry about my logbooks. Those are square because of the livestock exemption. When you get within 150 miles of where you're loading, you become off duty. I'm gonna go up here and see what they got shaken. These are pregnant cows, something you gotta watch for and I'm gonna deal with it here in a minute. They always wanna get as many cattle on as they can. However, these cows are gonna calve sooner than later. So because of that, I don't wanna overload. I wanna make sure everything has plenty of room. So the number that I wanna load right now is not the same it's not in sync with what they want to load we're going to look them over together and see if the cattle are small enough i'll load their number if the cattle are big you know they got late term pregnancy their bellies get pretty big i don't want them banging bellies in the trailer i want them just nicely just nicely stacked in there where they're they're easy and good so let's get up there to the chute and uh see what we got shaking Hey y'all, do you guys remember when I reviewed uh, an Iceco APL 55 last summer? I actually put it in my cab over this fall. It's partially responsible for my weight loss transformation. <laughs> I wanted to let you guys know a cool thing, a reminder about 
these ice co units. They come in lots of different sizes. I went for a pretty large one. Maybe should have gone a little bit smaller for my truck, but here we are. I like big things. Inside of this is a freezer and a refrigerator. Now, the fridges that you're used to in your rigs and such have a little freezer nook, usually at the top, and it'll keep like one or two little things frozen up there, and oftentimes it will bleed too much cold down into the fridge and it will frost your lettuce or whatever is up there near around the freezer. This has two big separate compartments. If you wanna make it all a refrigerator, you can. If you want it to all be a freezer, you can. It's up to you. That's the beauty, choice, choice. Ice Co this weekend, March 22nd through the 26th, fifth year anniversary. I remember my five year anniversary like it was eight years ago. Up to 30% off site-wide. If you've been wanting to get into an Ice Co, go check them out this week. Join the celebration, get you something good. 1 nice thing about when it's real cold y'all, the snow has a really nice bite to it. So it's rarely slick. You don't have to worry as much about getting stuck. Oh, look at that job. You'd think that I've been hauling cows for a while. As square as I got up to that chute. That's always the trick is getting that bumper square. If you have any gaps in there, you're asking for a foot or a leg to fall down in there. be loading the bottom of the nose first you guys i did my first my first trailer repair major trailer repair on this trailer this week and this is something we're going to be watching for on this trip don't mind my weld you gotta understand i've welded steel i'm decent at steel i'm not i'm not like an amazing welder but i'm proficient welding steel i decided to tackle aluminum for the first time and this is what you're seeing so as i explain this keep in mind this is the first time that i've ever ever welded aluminum in my entire life. Aluminum welders are very tricky. This plate right here was the old hinge. It had busted off. This, this welds pretty thick. This one's real nice here. This one across the top is pretty good. Um, this was an end cap, a thin little end cap that I had to put on that. But anyway, I welded this new hinge onto here on both sides, welded this to the wall plus bolted it. It should be, it's updated and it should be better than it ever was from the factory. Should be better than it's ever been since it was new. This is an older trailer, you guys. I'm not a, I'm not the kind of guy that wants to just go get new stuff all the time. Trade off, get new, get new. This thing's a 2008. It's got really good floors. It's not shiny, it's not all fancy, but it's a good solid trailer. And <clears throat> it's gonna run me for a lot of years. I'm just gonna keep her keep her in shape, make the necessary repairs, especially now that I can do them on my own. If you're wondering why my ramp is dirty and my trailer's clean, cattle hate walking up a clean ramp. So if it's just dry sawdust and whatnot, I leave my ramp dirty. If it's wet, juicy goo, I'll wash it off when I'm at the washout. But cattle, they're always hesitant to walk on fresh anything that's clean and fresh. So they'll hesitate at the door They'll come across here and they'll be happy to run up this ramp because it looks normal to them. It looks like what they're used to seeing. All right, take a peek here. You know, I don't know if you can tell. See those big old bellies on them cows? Bye-bye. Big old round bellies. They're not big cows. They're small cows. The weight of the cow is not the issue. It's those big old round bellies. You squeeze them in there tight, that's going to put pressure on that little calf growing in there and can cause problems later on. And I just don't want, I don't want to be a part of that beans that they're late term, we call them late term pregnant. Late in their pregnancy, see them waddling down, big old bellies, bloop, bloop. Oh yeah, look at that second, that second from the last one, man, she got a belly. So, I want them to have, it's, it's all, like I said, 750 miles, they need all the care they can get. And there's Joel. <laughs> you can get away with wearing boots, because it's froze. Hoping to have about 45 would be a really good number to haul. They pulled one, this one right here that you see by herself. She's crazed. What they'll do on these deals when they gotta get a certain number, they'll bring the whole bunch in. You'll sort through and pick off, you know, say we wanna hold two off or three. You'll pick off six or seven that you would call the lowest end of the group. And then you go back and refine your sort out of the seven and pick which two or three you want off. So usually you'll cut through them twice. Come on, girlies. 
That repair is holding up nice. Come on. Hey, they said I didn't do some, you guys. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Look at that stash kind of iced up a little. Iced up? Yeah, it's, it's called, no, it's called gray. It's called six oh, kids. Oh, yeah. six kids. I'm trying to catch up with this guy. We just had Good number luck. five. Good luck, man. But he's always a step ahead. Doesn't matter how, how fast I am. <laughs> Joel's always a little ahead of the game. Now, if you look back, Joel may have made a small cameo back in September when we loaded and went to Kansas. Oh, heck yeah. You might have got in on yeah, that. Yeah, down the Leland's. Yeah, down the Leland's place. That's good stuff. Remember the shoot where I had to back up the hill and the truck was like hopping? Oh, wow. Yeah, and I brought you groceries for your ride that time. Oh, yeah, you did. And, and I failed on this trip. Sorry. Oh, well. Cool. We'll oh. still make it. Good guy right here, you guys. Likewise. All right, y'all. We're loaded. So we ended up with 45, which was good. Because I don't think we could have fit anything more in. Uh, those big old bellies I learned as we started loading weren't entirely due to pregnancy. The cattle were the cattle were full. They were full, which is important when it's cold out. That's how cattle, you know, maintain body heat. Did you know that? That's what keeps the cow warm is the rumination of feed in their stomachs generates heat and that's how they keep their body warm so when it's really cold like this cows will eat like 20 30 percent more feed than they would you know on a on a not so cold night uh you can always tell that because when you start loading them they start squirting poo they did get a little a little bit of a splatter not a direct hit but a ricochet that's what we call it. a little ricochet on the pants there ah. thankfully it it's cold, so it froze kind of mid-air, didn't totally... Anyway. This is what we call the High Line of Montana. It's just the northern tier. Actually, west is that way. We're headed west right now, but about to get on the Highway 2 is just over the track. All these towns deal with the railroad. They got the railroad rolls right on through, and they all have all these railroad crossings. And the trains come through here a lot, so you do have to pay attention uh, for two different things. One, trains. <laughs> and two, some of these rural crossings, this one's a paved road, so it's not bad, but some of these rural crossings out here are really elevated, and trucks and such have been known from time to time to get hung up on the railroad track. You've all seen those videos on social media or whatever where a semi is stuck on a track and a train just smashes them in half. We don't want to become one of those, it's all clear. Never trust the dingers, of course. Trust your eyeballs. We made her down to the scale here. This is actually a DOT jump scale, but this is such a remote little town of Circle, Montana that I don't think I've in my entire career ever seen it open. However, they leave the scale on, which is nice. All right, well, we're, we're heavy. I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna self-incriminate too badly. You gotta watch out, I just about got pooped on. That came from there, which almost went on my head. Uh, I've got a flat tire that will not, it's going flat, you hear that? The little sidewall, uh, these are some older tires. These, uh, these tires actually came on my Peterbilt cab over when I bought it. I was wondering how your was. Yeah, it's a 99, but I, uh, I bought it it was a one owner truck. I bought it from the original owner. See, I told you guys about Joel. Here's the thing. Hey, man. He follow, he'll follow me all the way to Wyoming just to, he goes the extra mile. That Literally. Is that cool, dude? <laughs> I want to show you guys what we ended up doing, and then I'll tell you about this place in a second. So, tires are fixed. This was a good little trick. So, the tire that had gone bad was this outside position right here, right? It was this guy. It's now over there, leaned against the wall. I had a matching tire, same tread, same brand, and the same everything that was in this position. So I'm trying to get rid of all these. These are, I call them tall 24s. They're kind of obsolete in my fleet. So I'm not using these anymore. So what we did to save, I didn't want to buy a new tire that's going to be obsolete in my fleet. So because this is a single tire on a single position, I got a little smaller tire that matches the rest of my trailers, put it here roll this tire back to there and now i haven't wasted a purchase of a new tire because this one will ride here for a long time now didn't think i was going to stop and circle get a tire fix and not visit the lunchbox while i was there did you 
Got me a nice little chicken wrap and a raspberry smoothie. Staying fit, keeping her nice and trim. Cows are riding good. They're shrinking down, getting a little smaller. You can see it's pretty wet in there. Don't mind that little cap. I gotta finish doing something there. starting to see some of the juice some of the juice my goodness look at all that water look at all that water all that whiz there's a great plenty cows are looking good tires are all still hanging in there all is well I had to uh, bypass the scale due to my weight situation here's my new tire look at that big old thing Cooper tire. Should be a good one, huh? I like that. I like that. I like everything about Circle Montana. Another thing I've been watching is my water separator. So the way this thing works, when this filter gets plugged, this level of fuel will rise as the filter element gets more restriction. It's been kind of going up and down. Sometimes I'll stop and it's full and then I stop later and it's down. I got some bad fuel over in uh, Fargo, North Dakota a few weeks ago and I'm still struggling getting the rest of the water out of my system. That's a pain when that happens. But. Anyway, we'll top things off here. We're going out into the wilds of Wyoming and I don't think there's a lot for fuel down the way we're going. I've got a funny story for you. So when we went by the scale, I've got a pre-pass in my window here. It's a little transponder, right? So it scans you. And if you're good to go, they'll let you go. And if you're not good to go, they'll pull you in to the scale. Well, mine didn't do anything. No lights, no nothing. It was just nothing, which was weird. But three trucks in front of me just went on by the scale. So I was like, well, they must be getting lights. So. Due to the nature that my load's a little hefty, I went ahead and followed suit, went on went on with the rest of them, and uh, pulled in here to the truck stop to top off, and the old boy next to me there, driving for Covenant Transport, I said, hey, did you get a green light on your transponder to go by? And he's like, he kind of looked at me funny, and he's like, well, yeah. I said, well, my pre-pass didn't do nothing. What do you got? He showed me some best pass or something from back east. What well, what happened with you? And I said, well, I didn't get anything. So I just went on by with you in there. Cause you guys, I mean, if mine was working, I guess I would have probably got it. <laughs> he just looked at me and was just like, huh, <laughs> huh, never thought of that. You know, cause I told him I was heavy. I said, ah, a little heavy, so. I didn't want to cause a stir with anybody and ruffle anybody's feathers, so it's easiest just to avoid the situation. Huh. I said, I thought you was just an old outlaw blowing the scale there. I was just following you. I thought, well, if this old boy's outlaw enough to just burn the coop, I'm going with him. And he's like, no, 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 not me, no way. On to the mountainy leg of the journey now. We're going from Laurel, Montana south now. So kind of in and out, up and down for a while. Most of Wyoming's kind of like this. The whole state's just rolling whoopties. <laughs> I know that there are some pretty good pulls coming up, some good slow uphill climbs. So what I did, this trailer naturally, because of the big tall tires on the back, slopes forward just a little bit. So all my excess moisture, water, runs to the front of the trailer. Knowing that I'm gonna be pulling some big slow climbs out here in the wilds, I went ahead and opened one of my traps so that when I start climbing those hills, I can move over and nicely uh, lay a little watery deposit. Cleans the floor out for the cows. Uh, a lot of people get upset and they're like, whoa, uh, poo on the road. You know, it'll wash off with the next snowstorm, but um, it really cleans that trailer out and, dry, and dries it out. By the time we get down there, it'll more or less be either slushy frost 
or or the air blowing in the trailer will have it dried up uh, for the most part rather than having them stand in a couple inches of water it's like let's let it out it's the nice thing to do for the cattle so i call it being compassionate some of the motorists would call it being a jerk but i choose the cattle every time Welcome in and enjoy the remainder of this flight up over South Pass and down into the valley. Now, <laughs> here's what we got going. Bend some flashing lights, Highway 20, South Pass, Black Ice. All right, appreciate that. Last one said uh, level one chain law, which in, of course, those are not flashing, which means the road is open. Uh, it sounds like they're just trying to get people to kind of be heads up out here a little bit. Level one chain law in Wyoming, they have two levels, level one, level two. Level one is you got to have snow tires on your car and trucks got to have chains with them. Uh, I've got chains with me. I don't think we'll need them. I, like I said, I'm loaded heavy. My, my truck is where I'm mostly overweight on my axles of my truck, which is good this time of year in Wyoming, Montana, it's good to be heavy on your truck because you got extra traction. So we're heading to Farson Junction there. That's 69 miles from here. Sounds like we got about 20 miles of black ice and snow and stuff coming. Things get interesting. I'll be sure to bring you along. Hopefully no news is good news. And next time you see me, we're happily going down uh, the other side. All right, little update. So not a big deal, no black ice. It is pretty warm out though. I don't know what the temperature is, but it's warm. Too warm to freeze, I believe. However, I was very mistaken about South Pass. It is extremely steep. <laughs> I'm in low range, just creeping my way up, kind of settled in here, doing about 14 miles an hour. Uh, just so you, just for reference out there, loaded about 61,000 pound load today. So cab over's got a pretty good load on and the key to this stuff's always just going on your way taking it easy it's a long steady pull i don't want to get overheated none of that business all right y'all i think this is the top i think we made her i'm just really creeping along now that i got out of the steep part it got it got a little tough um i got halfway up and then they they had a chain required deal out but I had good momentum, I hadn't spun a wheel. Like I say, I'm loaded insanely heavy on my drives. And the snow started sticking on the road on top of the ice, so there's actually really good traction right now. And so I, I rolled on up, but I wanted to keep my momentum, so I had to whip and spur pretty hard on the truck. Heat it up a little bit. I've got a east wind. I don't know if you can see the snow blowing, but I got no I got no air coming in the front of this truck other than what the fan is sucking in. So we got a little hot because I was really, I was hogging on it, trying to keep it up to 25 miles an hour just so I didn't bog down and get in trouble up here. Um, heat it up to about 2, uh, 15, 18, just for the last probably minute. So anyway, here we are at the top. I'm just uh, idling across here a little bit, let things start cooling down. I'm getting my pyro cooled down, get that turbo cooled down. She warmed up a bit as well. But we're back down now to 190. Pyro, of course, is cold, so. Just gonna gather ourselves up here a minute. Another little trick if you're needing to keep your engine cooled off that helps uh, is to run your heater full blast, full bore. 
That helps pull a little more heat away from that antifreeze because that hot antifreeze runs through your heater. And then all the heat you can pull away from there is good. I see another truck up higher yet on the hill, so we're gonna roll back into it here and get ready for this next one. All right, one. this is the official top of the top chain removal area. I'm gonna pull off here, stop, check the cows. I like to check, make sure I don't have a coolant leak when you build up a little heat like that and you're hammering hard and you build a lot of pressure in your cooling system. I just like to take a peek, make sure nothing's weeping or seeping on the ground. Stretch my legs a little, it's pretty stressful. And uh, make sure the cows aren't uh, piled up in there. Nothing from such a long, slow, endless climb. All right, we're good. Cows are all good in there. Oh, I can just shine in and see. Everybody looks good up here. They've sure shrunk down and aren't nearly as big as they were. See how that fuels. That's yeah, doing all right. Looks good. It's just melting a little snow there from that fan blowing some hot air down. <laughs> and now we're going down the backside here. So what's really going to be important here is to not be in a hurry. I, I just don't know. I can't remember what it's like going down this this backside. So I need to be with little black ice slick spots. I need to just really be easing along. Use my Jake brakes, but only at that real low RPM. So we might just be creeping down this thing at 15 or so miles an hour. There's a little car behind me. I'm gonna let him go by, be courteous here just don't want to get caught on a slick hill going a little too fast the old saying is you only go down a hill too fast one time <laughs> hopefully I'm far enough ahead of those other semis that were chaining up back there a couple of empty uh, flatbed and freight truck that didn't have any weight on so they really needed their chains but you know having that car in front of me actually is kind of nice out there see that light I can use that sort of as a bellwether because now I can tell well it's level for at least from me to them so I can pick it up a little bit and then uh, slow down by that next corner all right feeling good a little further down the hill here I see on my map watching the road it's just like a perfectly straight shot for the next several miles here so a little bit of a hill there. that car's kind of sunk down in but not uh, not horrible. After I got unloaded, I wanted to get out of the area that I'm unloading later tonight because it's supposed to be down to zero. And I thought, well, I'd like to come back this way, but anyway. All right, coming down the home stretch here. See, there's plenty of snow drifted in. So, hopefully, the corrals aren't too bad, but we'll find out. There's a little snow, it's piled up about to my door. <laughs> Sheesh. He's got it all dug out for me though. All right. All out, all good. Done and done. Here you go, the morning after. Decided to take a pretty good snooze after I unloaded, let the sun come out, clear these roads off. This is all that pass that I was climbing up last night that was so slick and chained up. Give you an idea of what's out there on Old South Pass. Some big old country. guys those are tricky as you saw here's the problem with with it They're, it's marked as a 14 foot clearance these cow trailers are 13 6 and it's 13 6 in a square 
You know, it's not it's not like 13.6 in the middle of the trailer. It's the entire square outline of the trailer is 13.6. So they say 14, but this is a case where it's not actually 14. And I know this because I had a good friend of mine drive through those tunnels in his cow trailer in his lane and he caught the top corner and smashed in the corner of his cow trailer up high on a rock. So it's tricky. You have to, what I call center up in those tunnels, not entirely go over the center line, but you've got to move your rig onto the center line or a foot or two over the center line. Uh, otherwise you're going to hit your cow trailer. So people honk at you shake their fist you're like you guys I cannot I'm sorry it's a 35 mile an hour speed limit through here that's why we're going slow is because we're gonna have some really tight moments together in here and as we came out of that last tunnel as you saw that semi that was coming in he was already in a spot where I couldn't see before I entered the tunnel it appears that there's no one because there's a couple seconds of blind nothing so you can't see him coming in the tunnel from his side and his as you're popping out all of a sudden here comes this truck around the corner and we were close I mean I was I was on the yellow line admittedly because that's where you have to be and I don't think he liked that very much but there's nothing you can do about it nature of the beast they probably could go in there and blast out those tunnels and square them up a little bit but that would be very expensive and I don't know would they uh, be in danger of collapsing now if they went in and started shaking them up so for now, we continue to uh, center up anytime we go through the Wind River Tunnels. Bringing it on in. Here's a trailer I'm probably not gonna get to use this year. <laughs> Rates are in the dump for hoppers. Well, the sun is fast setting, which means on a phone, you lose your camera quality really fast. I'll wrap this up. That was a good run. It was an uneventful, quiet day coming home. No bad roads, no issues. Truck ran good, everything was good. No flat tires, none of that. No shenanigans. Everything just was nice and easy. We rolled home, drove about 58 miles an hour the whole way home today. It's really important when, uh, when profit margins get slim, and they are uh, as slim as they've ever been in my trucking career right now. The rates are just so bad across the spectrum that uh, it's tough, it's tough. Normally this time of year, I'd hook on the hopper trailer and go out and run and go. And the deal that we go through and go with on that is said, don't bother. It's just not worth your time. Uh, I know reefer rates are in the tank, flatbed rates are, it's tough. It's really hard to average $2 a mile for this over the road freight right now. And that's just not enough. So it'll be interesting to see how 2024 unfolds. I'll probably talk more about that in maybe a special video sometime. A few tips and ideas for people out there trying to get through 2024 in the trucking world. It's gonna be an interesting maze to navigate, but that's for another day. This was a great cattle run. Everything was smooth. Uh, I'm gonna take Blue 3, unhook the trailer off it, take her down to the shop and give her a good bath tomorrow, give it a good clean out. Um, probably my last run for a while in Blue 3. Uh, kind of using Blue 3 as my cattle truck in the fall uh, and in, you know, the last little bit here in the wintertime. Um, we we'll parking this in place of the Coronado. I don't know what I'm going to be doing for trucking exactly here. It's, it's, it's as I just mentioned, it's going to be a very weird year. Uh, I want to get the Coronado out, break it in, do some stuff. However, I'm not going to go out and just haul stuff that's that's bad. I, I don't want to contribute to the freight problem, the rate problem that we have. So um, too many people out hauling too many cheap loads, too many trucks in the market uh, that kind of came on board over the last two or three years. Anyway, you guys, hope you enjoyed. Cattle runs are always fun. It's always fun to see what's shaking there. You got to see a little bit of everything. Good roads, bad roads, flat tires, good old small town folks, everything in between. So until next time, y'all be good.